Hey everybody, welcome back. More EVA Japan interviews with the 2XKO team here. Who do I have to my lovely side here who's going to be talking to me about the video game and what do you do? Uh, hi, I'm Mike. I'm the creative director on the project. Yeah, so I asked you, like, oh, creative director, what should I ask you about? And I realized as creative director, your job is basically like a million things. So what, what's under the umbrella of creative director? Yeah, under creative direction, there's uh, art, music, sound, uh, narrative. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Oh, and uh, visual design, like the gra uh, HUD and all that kind of stuff. Basically the whole video game. So I figured I would narrow it a little bit since I talked to Eugene about music, that we could talk a little bit about the visuals for the game. Yeah. Uh, to start with, you know, obviously there's so many ways people have seen all the champions in League of Legends, right? Like, you know, a lot of people see them top down from all the way up here, or maybe you play some TFT, you got the cute little chibis that are running around with, you know, and all the other games that you guys have done. So when deciding how this game should look, you know, what is the challenge of figuring that out and then working towards that direction in regards to not only a fighting game, but an established IP that already has sort of a look and feel to it? Yeah, I mean, something you might have noticed when you look at the characters is we have redesigned them to some degree. Yeah. Uh, some characters get more or less of a redesign, and there's two sort of components to that. One is how do they work in a side camera versus a top camera, because that's a big part of League, right? They all read from that angle most of the time. And then the other thing is we actually look at their personalities, and we sort of think about, like, would this character change the way they look, or are they like Yasuo, who's just, like, roaming the earth, like, not... He's not going to put on like a backwards baseball cap one day and not another day. So, um, so that's kind of how we look at them. We we want to make sure that that read is clean, but it is always a balancing act because league characters have a lot going on, and so we're always just trying to figure out the way to simplify them but keep them true to how people remember them. Yeah, exactly. And I was going to say it's cool that there's there's slight changes to a lot of them that I think that are really cool. I think one that a lot of people talked about was Echo as an example. Like yeah. he looks so cool in this game, and so like designing something like that, right? You obviously were like, well, he has a reason to change how he looks, right? He looks different in some of the other media, so it makes sense. Yeah, uh, one of the main things that we look at actually is how youthful the character is. We have a few other characters that people haven't seen yet that we think they would change the way they look. They would adapt and evolve over time. And so that's kind of what we do whenever we get to a character. We ask ourselves, would that happen with this character? Or are they somebody more like a Lowy who wears like a lot of religious stuff and just wouldn't be changing that up? The look of this game, the art style, is, is so pretty. It's a really, really nice game to look at. So how did you decide on this sort of a style versus, you know, there's many other ways to represent the characters and how they look and how they feel in the game? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people when they play 2XGO, they can feel that we're like old school fighting game fans. And there's a lot of like rules that old school fighting games have that like like visual hierarchy and how characters look and their power fantasies and all that. And so that's kind of what ended up bringing us over to where we were, especially compared to where we were like years ago, is trying to really go for the thing that inspires us. And that's why we look at like old Capcom games, old SNK games, and we take some of the uh, qualities that those have that are done for reasons that are both just flat out cool and also like serve gameplay and we take those and we pump them so that's kind of how we ended up getting to where we are today is like what are we inspired by and a lot of us are inspired by like 90s fighting game stuff i feel like you can see a lot of it especially with like the darker shadows and edges on the characters now versus like some of the earlier footage they were like like a little flatter looking right and so like they kind of evoke a more 3d feeling in like a 2d game which is something that other companies have done as well but it looks really nice i feel like with these characters and to jump onto that one thing that i really like is the when you guys have like effects happening on the screen stuff like echoes uh, clone, like when he puts the rewind down and stuff like that, or allow his tentacles in this. First of all, those look really cool, but how challenging is it to like design or create those things alongside the idea of that, oh, this will all be changing colors when they're in different colors or chromas and stuff like that. So how is that whole process of like splatting something down and being like, okay, does this work in 9, 10, et cetera, many colors? Yeah, actually, that's one of the biggest challenges of our product is we know we're going to have a lot of chromas and we're going to change all of that stuff. Uh, so the VFX team, the character team, they work really hard at a couple of things. One is just like what looks good when we do all of this. What is uh, going to actually disrupt gameplay or not? If we suddenly take, uh, like to use something everybody knows, if we take like reuse fireball and make it purple, does that still feel like reuse fireball? Right. And so we have that problem across like all of our characters. When you take Echo's swipe and you make it purple, what happens to that? And so there's a lot of like readability, character identity, and also then just like pure aesthetics that we're always looking at. And it's a learning process. Early on, stuff that people haven't even seen, we didn't get it right at first, and we were really trying to figure that out. And I think now, like with the build that we have today, like Alawi, for instance, she's got chromas that I think are just super sick. And then you see those tentacles change colors, and it just feels really cool and special, and keeps gameplay like really clear. Yeah, she has a purple color, which I think I picked when I played earlier, where her, her tattoo is like a full sleeve, yeah. basically. Yeah. It's unique. Some of the characters have things like that, where on their like base, outfit here some of the colors have unique stuff on them which i think is really cool so how do you decide like which color gets that does it just fit or does it feel right you know 
Yeah, it kind of just feels right, but it's not um, done like really flippantly. Like we have a concept team that works on it, then that goes over to the character team. They try to put all the colors into the game. We play them a bunch. We see what's working, what isn't, and what maybe goes too far, what doesn't, and then sort of dial it back. And so it's like a it's a pretty lengthy process actually. Early on, we were like, oh, this should be pretty easy, and then it wasn't at all. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Uh, speaking of which, how is the process of accounting for readability? with four different characters throwing multi-colored swipe slashes, projectiles, all that kind of stuff, tagging in and out. Like, how do you figure out how a game like that should look and the challenges of making sure that you can read it both as a player but as, also as a spectator, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's the real big thing because we want to go big because we want it to be exciting and we also want to like express the power fantasy of all these characters. But when we go too big, it gets crazy. And so it's, again, it's same with the Chromas. It's like this balancing act. We're always pushing forward. Maybe we go too far and pull it back. Um, but the team is basically always keeping readability on their mind the entire time. And I think what we usually tend to do is we tend to go a little less crazy and then we go no 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 we can go much bigger with this it's going to be much more fun and eventually as a gamer as a fighting game player you start sorting things out visually and it can get crazier than we initially expected and people can totally figure it out yeah that makes a lot of sense and then what goes into creating something like this Alawi level two that everybody saw i think it's so far of everything we've seen in all the builds right it's like the most like astounding like whoa this is wild you know of all the stuff i think previously it was probably the yasuo level one level two situation, right? So what goes into making something like that? And uh, should we expect more things like that for characters when they come out? That alt was kind of a risk for us because it also kind of like brings the tempo of the fight down for a minute. Right. And when we first put it into the game, we actually were like, is this okay? And I think the fact that it leans on like her lore and it's this big dramatic moment and it just feels really powerful. Like when you're the Alawi player and you do that, you feel like you are big and you are judging this opponent, right? And so, yes, I think you're going to see more stuff like that. You're going to see everything that we build is just going to get stronger and we're always like learning from the things that we build. I think the Alawi alt, seeing the reaction to it, has helped calibrate us on like what we need to be doing going forward. Um, and we may even be going back and like taking a second look at old stuff as well. And I imagine that that is a big fight of like, how long does this super need to be? Does it need to be five seconds, seven seconds, 10 seconds, two seconds? Like, you know, that time, you know, especially when you play a game for thousands and thousands of hours, you're going to see the super a million times. Like for me, when I watch uh, fighting games, after like the first month, when I see a super flash, I skip the arrow key forward. So how do you come up with the right amount of time for something to look, you know, in a case by case basis, it sounds like for something like a Lowey too. Yeah, I mean, it really is feel. We play the game a lot um, as a, as a uh, team. When we started, we went through every fighting game we could. We looked at all the supers. We looked at ones that excited us, ones that didn't, and ones that felt really long and like they overstayed their welcome. Not to mention, we've all watched tournaments for decades, and we know what that feels like, right? And so we wanted to do something that had the impact, and it felt like uh, a little story was happening, um, but you weren't sitting there through like a 20-second and that's the other thing that's funny. I just said 20 seconds. 20 seconds doesn't sound long. In a fighting match, that's an eternity. Yeah. And so at first, we had like, I don't know, one alt in our game was like 10 seconds. We were like, this is forever. And so we started shaving it down. And so we like to keep them between like five and eight seconds. Eight is like as long as we really want to go so that they don't overstay their welcome. We don't want people skipping. People probably still will. But like, that's part of the flavor of the game. So we want to get in and get out before people are like bored of what we're doing. Yeah, five seconds is perfect because it matches the skip on YouTube. So love that. We did but, it for you. Yeah, thank you. But I was going to ask, something that I imagine was a bit of a, a squabble potentially maybe was whether the character palettes should all be matching or not, right? So like when the character's in the game, they, like every character has the same kind of color palettes, right? It's like each character has like a pink in this color and like a blue in this color. Like was it something that you guys had always settled on that being the case or was it like, a, oh, no, it's like we're playing a team game. Like it's just nice that it matches up like this. Yeah, we talked about it early on and then it was a bit of a happy accident where we had some characters that had matching colors and we actually found the team was always picking characters that they would match them as much as they could and anytime we had play tests for people outside of the team they would go through the colors and be like oh they can both be red awesome we're gonna go both red and so then we started coming up with it's not super unified like it's not quite as regimented but we make sure that like everyone's got some sort of a pairing that they can do and then it just makes that synergy especially when you're playing with another person feel 10 times stronger yeah, every time I sit down for duos, I'm just like, all right, what color are we playing? Yeah. Like, you have to have that conversation of, like, where are we at here? And then they say a color that you, like, you don't love, and you're like, yeah, we, we could do that, I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah. We plan on tearing couples apart with color picking in this. Yeah, absolutely. The last thing I was going to ask about, is there a visual in this game that, like, you know, I know the Alawi Super is a big one, but something that it's, like, really, like, it doesn't seem like it was challenging, but it was, like, such a hassle to be like, oh, we finally got this thing to the right place, right? Like we were, we were struggling about whether it should look really big, really small, really fast, really, really long. It was just like, oh, we nailed it and you're super happy with the outcome. 
Actually, I would say that it is our background style. Um, there was a time where we were really exploring different things with backgrounds, and we were actually doing some like extreme testing on like doing things like light as paint and things like that. Like we were trying to see exactly how impressionistic or how painterly we go with the backgrounds. And as time went on, uh, we ended up abandoning some of those ideas. It was because we wanted to produce them relatively efficiently, have them look really cool and readable, have them not take center stage. Like we, we packed a lot into the background so that they're interesting and cool, but we didn't want them to be doing so much unique things that it was like pulling from what was happening in the foreground. So the environment team worked really hard on finding something that I think has uh, smacks of what some other products do, but that, but it does still feel different than other games. Yeah, I was going to say real quick to go back onto this, but like in the background of stages and fighting games, there's always like a dude just doing this and stuff in every game. But then you, not only do you guys have something like that, but there's also like the cute animal stuff. Is it hard not to just pack like we're in Bilgewater, there's got to be a little crab, man. We're in Ionia, there's got to be a cute little deer spirit. Like I have to imagine sometimes you have to hold back a little bit almost on that. Yeah, it's that thing that starts leading you to you spend so much time on a stage that the next stage is just a bamboo thicket because you're like, we got to get another stage out the door, right? And so like it's one of those things where you're always trying to find that right balance of distracting, but also like how crazy is it going to be to build these things? I like Bilgewater, that stage, like there are so many NPCs back there. And then once we decided that was going to be like a big set piece stage, we then also had to make sure that with all that chaos, it wasn't pulling too much from what's happening in the foreground. So yeah, that's a, that's a hard challenge. Yeah, I could totally imagine because every stage has some stuff going on. That stage is so interesting because as you mentioned, there's so much going on, but I feel like I don't notice it when I'm playing. But while watching, I constantly like, oh, look at the little guy right there. So I think that that balance, I think you guys did really great with it. But uh, yeah, I really appreciate you answering all the questions. Thanks everybody for tuning in to everything. Hopefully you enjoy everything. We'll have more interviews and stuff for 2XKO and EVA Japan stuff in just a little bit. <laughs>